Well, hello, and welcome to the devotion uh, for Thursday, August the 6th, that comes from Galatians chapter 6. Uh, you know, sometimes it's really tough when you're doing these things, because when I look through Galatians 6, there's probably at least four different areas I'd like to focus on, and time just won't allow it, so I'm going to focus on one, but I do just want to read the verse that I think should be so true it should be true for every one of us as believers but god forbid that i should boast except in the cross of the lord jesus christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and i to the world i don't don't know if i mentioned that's verse 14 and you know that just says as christians what do we boast on the completed work of christ uh that he died for my sins according to the scriptures was buried rose again on the third day and my hope indeed is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. But as we look at uh, verse 7, those first four words, do not be deceived. Those words of not being deceived or being warned about deception addressed to the children of God are numerous in the New Testament. Quite often they are. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, one, uh, telling us about the last days, talks about these false teachers, these imposters who themselves are being deceived and will deceive others. Jesus in Luke 21, speaking to his followers, warns about false prophets who will come and who will deceive many. And I think the danger is that we can read words like that and somehow skip over them and think that does not apply to me. And most of the time when you have words like this, uh, it is believers that the Word of God is speaking to. So do not be deceived. And understanding that I can be deceived is part of what puts us on guard and why we need to know the truth of God's Word because Satan is the ultimate deceiver. But then it goes on and says, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now, I think sometimes just in reading that, people almost immediately get this negative connotation. Okay, God's not mocked, so therefore when you go out and do bad things, uh, you're going to sow what you reap. And you know, that that's just a natural thing, right? I mean, if, if you sow corn, you get corn. If you sow thorns, you get thorns. Whatever you sow, that's true in the natural, and it's also true in the spiritual. So there really is this thing, if I go and sow to the flesh, I'm going to reap of the flesh. But there's also that other very positive thing there, where he says that, that whoever reaps of the Spirit, or sows to the Spirit, will reap life everlasting. And he says this, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. So, first of all, I and you as God's people need to be very cautious what we sow, that we're not sowing death, that we're not using our tongue to speak death to people, and that we're not sowing discord and all that stuff. But to me, there is a tremendous promise here for us. If we will spend our lives sowing to the Spirit of God, sowing a life, sowing the things of God, the time is going to come that we are going to reap the things of God in due season, if we faint not. I've walked with the Lord and I've been in ministry long enough to know this. Many times we feel like fainting. Many times we pour into things and we're thinking, where's the results? Why aren't we seeing this happen? Why aren't people getting saved? I've invested in, that, in, in, in those people's lives or that person's life or whatever, and I don't see any difference being made. This is a promise of God. Listen, you may not see the, uh, the harvest till even you have died and gone home. 
and realize what has transpired with what you've done with your life. You know, you and I as a church, we're praying for the Kanembu people and we're sowing into Chad. And and from here and because of the way things are, we don't maybe see a lot of that. But I'm convinced when you and I get home that we're going to have a Kanembu believer walk up to us and say, thank you for sowing. So I think here is simply what I want to encourage us in today. Every one of us sow every single day of our lives. And if you don't see the results, ask God, should I be doing something different? But if you know it's the right thing, keep being faithful. Keep sowing. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. And whatsoever you sow, you will reap. Keep sowing the things of the Spirit of God. Hey, and I pray that you'll get to see some of that harvest come sooner than later. God bless you.